And well, right here between Magnus Carlsen and Min Lei, Magnus has two rooks. Black only has one, but they're two minor pieces. So James, the, the pawns, that's what Magnus is relying on. Get those pawns going. But he just gave up F2, and that gives Black a passer in the center. Forever, the history. Oh! Oh my god! There is no way! Fabiano and smiling. This is immortality stuff. Here today, we just see a nine round Swiss. 10 minutes of starting time two seconds added with every move played. That increment is super important for some of our participants who may not be so good with their mouse skills. And we have 69 people advancing to division placement, 30 through 69 in the third division, 12 through 29 in the second division, and first through 11, they get a chance to play for division one. It's open to all grandmasters and those who have qualified. This is the fourth leg of four. It is the final chance for all the players vying to make the season and finals. And as you see here, this has been your 2020. Yeah, we have, uh, oh man, but he does have some counterplay, but that pawn is guarded by the rook on A1. Like we're fine. We just pushed the pawns. C5, yeah, D5, guess, D6. Look at, look at Magnus. He's just saying, yeah, whatever. You take that pawn, take G4 as well. But rook B7 is a game ending threat because I don't think black can afford to trade the rooks there as then the pawn lands on the seventh and this bishop will just be kicked around a bit with the rook coming through. So James, 30 seconds from Min, can he find a way to at least keep this game going? Yeah, that's tough. If I, if I could, if the G pawn was gone, okay, you know, I'm just pushing them boys into oblivion. Push the F and E. Yeah, just but, th start throwing you know. those pawns. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 it's separated. It's very good. And look, look at the clock. Min is Min getting very low on time. Oh, he's twirling his hair. He plays bishop f4. He's staying alive for the moment, but a7? What's the problem with just pushing the pawn? He gets behind the pawn first. Very nice. And then push. I can take the pawn, though. Okay, he the does. black yeah, king. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. This h pawn, though, James, that could be very annoying to deal with. That pawn is running quite quickly, and if you don't stop it, then white is going to have a hard time dealing with a, one passer and then maybe a second later. Hmm, that's actually what he's doing right now. Is there a rook? And you now he has king g6. Wow. Rook. I have to get behind the pawn. We knew that. But then there may be something with a h6 square bishop. Okay, he went there instead. h3 can be played, so we do have it unlocked. So maybe we can push. But is black going to go king g6 and then try to get that pawn going? So I, I'm with mm. you. I think c5 looks right. But black is ready to kick that rook out from h7. Got some calc here. Uh, wow. Brings the king up, has to move the rook. Men with chances. Yeah, it's, it's equal all of a sudden, but who's actually better? This h2 move, rook g1, not possible. h2 still hitting the rook and then trying to get a queen. So I think that Magnus is the one who needs to be careful right now. Wait, I was say push knight. Yeah, he, oh, you can keep pushing. You can keep pushing. Knight uh, to f2. You play c7, you sack the rook, and then you play maybe rook b8. Very possible. Uh, and, or even, even try to push the third pawn too, the d pawn too as well at some point. Yeah, d5 makes a lot of sense. If Oh, it plays c7. That's captured yeah, quickly. Take, 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 take. And so then wait, push, the... push, push, and rook c8, if possible. And, and this king can also join the party, right? He's trying to keep the knight away. This knights are just such clumsy pieces. Yeah, especially when they're far away from the action like this. It takes a while, you guys, to come back with some checks. Could bring the king in some more. Oh, this is like Devoreski page 573 in the back of the book. Boy, it's tough. <laughs> D D6, oh, King E6, D7, D7? Yeah, Rook yeah. C8's in Correct. game ending threat. With the Rook C8 idea, yeah. Here yeah. comes. How is Ming to stop? He's at eight. Oh, he makes the wrong move. He D7. is in such time trouble. And that's Rook it. C8 now is what's going to win Magnus the game. Yeah, that's it. That's so funny. Like, I saw this idea after uh, Knight C7, which was nice. A Knight of two. But yeah, Magnus is able to cleanse this in no time here. Check Wait. King. Well, there's Knight only G6 now. King C3. He goes King D, the wrong square. That doesn't make any sense. But both players have no time. So Rook C8, if you take with the Knight, you promote. Yeah. Look at this tactical motif. Beautiful. Beautiful. Queen and GG. Okay, fighting, fighting. He got the pawn. Oh, this is <laughs> oh, this is back of the book for real. <laughs> um, I'm, the table right. base says that this is a win for white. And here at this point is actually getting easier and easier because the black king will not be able to keep this pawn. And Okay, now that when this pawn drops, th these players, they know how to win queen versus rook. You're just going to push the king closer to the edge of the board, and the rook will have to leave somewhere where you can check and pick it off. 
That's it. That's all it's about here. It's just edging closer, as you see. He's getting the king closer. Now, king d6 is going to be rook d7. So, exactly. Queen b5. Very beautiful move there. That was a very important move. I think queen a6. Well, queen c6 works, too. You just want to avoid any sort of pin or a, a, uh, a stalemate. So, look to see how many squares the black king has. And king c6 now is the threat. There it is. Queen a5 does it. And this is gg. And you should be able to pick off the, the rook within two moves or so. You know what happens. Queen b6, you got Check. a b7, and now king c6. Oh, uh, same idea, just from the there different part of the board. GG. And now you you should be able to check and get to b1, right? You see this down right. here? Exactly. The black king can't step to F the uh, c8 square because queen f8's mate, and here it comes. The queen is just going to either give a check here or back like this, and min resigned. Look at this. What is going on here? There is so much craziness happening uh, in these matches. Vidit apparently winning because of uh, Levon's last move. Oh, this is a little fork. Oh, dang. Head shake, head shake. That's an instant reason. You can resign. Hit yeah. the button. Dang. French is, bro. That's three losses in a <laughs> row with the French today, guys. So I don't know who's a French player in chat, but I'm just saying. Checked on G1. I mean, we just caught the rook landing down there. There's Queen E1 next to pick up the rook on. D2, so Wesley was holding on, but two bad moves in a row have turned this game completely in Arjun's favor. Rook F8, the knight can't move. Rook takes F3, was the threat, and now bring the other rook over, James. This is just barreling down the F-file. Man, he locked in. He is locked in. Take, 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 take. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you can take even, even with the rook, right? Because there's a fork over here, and the two pawns should help black win. Wow, yeah, it takes, that's it. That's very nice. Very nice from Vita here. Okay, time is getting low, but this should be... What White needs to do is get this knight sacrifice for these pawns over here, and knight takes oh. c5, check. So he's going to go rook c4, keeping the winning chances alive. But James, even rook and bishop versus rook, when you have no time, it's a theoretical draw, but drawing it with no time on your clock is almost impossible. Yeah, especially with this pawn being a menace right now, we can get back to d3 at some point. Maybe rook d2, though, we'll block that. Rook d2 is also a move. Rook d2 and play Send b5, b5 immediately. Okay. Oh, he plays rook d2 and knight c4 played. I think this bishop can be captured and the rook can come to c1. So it's saying that this now should be a draw and vidit has got to find some... Oh! C2. <laughs> Ooh, heat. <laughs> we got to go maybe oh. rook something. Check. Rook c3, but I think the knight... Oh, he doesn't even capture. Yeah, the okay. pawn's going off the board. Dang, draw. He might be holding. Look at that. LeBron Aronian. Wow, not giving up. And a draw. Amazing play from. Oh, knight b3! Whoa! Oh, no! no! Oh he my just... goodness! Oh my gosh, he just stole a loss. I mean, Vidit was just oh playing so goodness. well. Oh. Uh oh. Bishop takes bishop, rook takes, and rook takes d4. Tactics. I think that's available to black. Tactics, right? How do you beat Magnus? You beat him with tactics. So, yeah, okay, right. He just said it down, right? So, but, you know, tactical. It's generally a draw, but there is ways to win it. I was maybe look, Bishop should be the king close as well. And, and I guess you also have to hope for targets, like this F7 pawn. If you can get your pieces coordinated, the queen and bishop can line up. But E5 is the choice. That, of course, makes sense. This knight goes up to E4. Are there threats? Knight d2 looks scary, so he goes king g2. And James, the good news is after knight d2, the bishop is free to go somewhere, maybe bishop d3, and you don't get any checks along the first rank. And we see this is the only move that keeps black in the game the way he currently stands. Knight d2 found by Min. This bishop, where is it going to go? Bishop d3 feels safe and sound. Bishop a6 is like running away, but it does feel a little bit loose. So Magus, he wants to put pressure on the clock as well as on the board. Much, so much. Bishop, oh, oh, yeah. Min, <laughs> bro, Did... the tactics. That was sick. I'm gonna go. I, I mean, instant replay. Queen G1, take my queen. But after the king takes knight of three, fork back, and now we're seeing an end game, James. Where I do still think that Black has a lot left to prove because these pawns are on light squares. And that means that if black isn't careful, white can try to poke at them, uh, but it's going to be difficult to actually convert this game. In particular, the bishop doesn't match the h8 square. So if these three pawns come off the board, the three I've highlighted in red, g, f, and a, e, the, the game's immediately a draw. 
Bishop versus Knight. You know, as you said, there's a lot of work to be done here still. F6, question mark. Yes, I think White can play Bishop B5, and that's what Magnus does. Magnus is so good at endgames just like this. I see the feature shot Minlay with the comeback, but Magnus says, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm number one for wow. well over a decade now. And James, I mean, look at the king coming up. The knight is running out of squares. Yeah, and here we go. As we just mentioned, you got to take at the right moment, and then this is just a winning endgame. Now, why don't we do this? Maybe takes, takes. We could just make a waiting move, right? No. Yeah. Should, okay. Shorter. Goes for a little threat here. Black is probably tempted to play a move like g5, but I think that could backfire as uh, this knight on e e6 can be attacked and you won't be able to keep control over this side of the board. Eight seconds for Min. He needs to find a move. Whoa. He made a move, but it was the wrong one. Right. And now white is winning, apparently. Yep. We saw this coming. <laughs> Somehow we knew this was coming. Now, how do we finish? So f5. Okay, knight d7. He plays g5. We could take. Maybe I could go h5. H5 probably is going to make it a lot harder. But the same H5 is mm. the only move. That's tough. Uh, that's not an easy move to make, right? Because uh, for white, you say black can control the dark squares, but right. he finds it. Of course, Magnus does. I mean, it's Magnus. He says, I'm going to Zug Zwang you. Zayas is so doubt, is what I like to say. He, there are no real good moves besides shuffling, and at some point, you're going to run out of moves. And we are seeing Min making the moves. He's trying to kind of shut down the king side here. But h6, the only move found, that makes perfect sense, keeping the black king out. And look at the knight, James. It's completely dominated. Like, even if it gets to g5, it doesn't threaten all that much. And the white king is inching closer. It's king f5. I mean, look at the Zug master here. Zugged out, as you have to move the knight uh, at some point. Check. Whoa. It's like some... Bishop f7? No, bishop something, anything. And there it is. Whoa. Beautiful. Don't take the knight, right? <laughs> yeah. but take the knight! <laughs> take yeah, it! Taking the, <laughs> taking the knight. Oh no, that g pawn. It's right. going to become a queen real quick, but this is how Magnus wants to get it done. f6 now. King can take one pawn, cancel something. Magnus Carlsen beats Min Lei. An exceptional move, and it's. Given the brilliancy, look at this. Black has all sorts of threats here. The knight on e4 is loose. If the queen moves, e2 is going to come with check. Rook c2 will happen if you move this knight away. There's all sorts of stuff happening here. And bishop d4, that means that black has no chance anymore. Because if you take on e4, that looks pretty good. But then we start trading pieces and your queen is overloaded because the bishop on a7 is not defended. So if you take on d4, the rook takes and protects the knight. I love moves like this because instead of being in any danger, Jan says, thank you for your minor piece, game's over. It highlights that so much, and you get to see this at the highest level uh, when they do these type of moves, and you're like, oh, that's amazing, because the best defense is offense. Instead of defending passively or trying to find something to defend, I can defend while attacking, which you see here flawlessly from Jan. Just cruising to victory now. If queen takes bishop, and that's in play, bishop takes bishop, e3, is falling in the near future and queen f3 do not take that pawn queen g2 would have been mate and james we can see if the queens are traded it's a winning end game for white if the queens aren't traded down goes e3 rook f2 white just shields his king so this has been great performance from yana pomshi against jose martinez yeah it's amazing actually was this the english game it started is it english i think this was in English, you're correct. Yeah, yeah, he loves the English. He's a very sharp there too. In many ways you can go and just up a material here. Uh, easy conversion. Rookie three, king of two, he plays a four, just classy. And look at this, the, the move for black is age five. By the way, Levon Aronian, he won that game against Vidit Gujarati. He only needed a draw. Vidit gave it his all, but that means Levon Aronian will be in the top division. Vidit Gujarati will be in division two, where so many of the other strong players reside. So not the end of the world, but not what he wanted. And James, in this one, I mean, Arjun Aragaisi, he is on the cusp of making it to division one. H5, though, not the easiest move, though. It does secure the G4 square for the night. Plus, I mean, I was trying to get queen c2 in anyway with the threat of knight g4 check then, right? So, Ooh. you know, this is all like, you know, queen c2 is what I wanted to play anyway. So queen c2 hits the rook, rook goes to g1, he's calculating that. He might find it actually after that. Maybe he finds it now, but queen c2, rook g1, then you'll be like, I want to get g4 in. Oh, play h5. You know, like, then you'll be able to uh, to see that quickly in that order. Because it's very human-like, but h5 is nice. 
A try is a really good move, and we see Arjun spending time his rook A1, not a blunder, but not the best decision, so missed opportunity. H5 was available, but Wesley's in time trouble, James, so he's going to have to find moves fast. Knight D2, and what do you do? Take, take, whoa, that's a queen sack. That's because made on H1. Oh, rook H1's Ooh, main. He took so the he knight. The, but queen C2, that's a pin yeah. on the second rank. Queen C2 is correct. Queen C2. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good move. Okay. Queen C2, and what do you do? Knight takes A6, King A7, and then we double on A1. Yeah, it just seems very... Uh... Just direct here for black. I mean, rookie two, there's not even a good discovery. You're, yes, the rook is under attack, but here just maybe slide your rook out the way, and that should suffice for an, a huge advantage. Yeah, rook d1 or e. Yeah, maybe just rook d1. Rook c1. Okay, he takes. There it is. He takes. There's no checks, he says. Oh, queen. Okay. G4 is coming. Rook is hanging. That's game. No time. That's. He was the fifth player to choose his opponent, so he was left with Wesley So. You know that's not who he wanted to face.